If you're interested getting into the Neptunia series but don't know where to start, then this video is for you. The Neptunia series hasn't been around for all that long, yet there are a ton of games ranging from mainline titles to spin-offs and remakes on four different platforms. With that many games, things can get a bit overwhelming. As always, everyone has different consoles and preferences, so I'll try to make recommendations with that in mind, so that as many as people as possible can get something out of this video. By the end, I hope to give you a better overview of the series, so you can make your own decision on what the best place to start is for you. And for anyone who played one or two games before, I'll try and recommend some other games for you to check out as well. And I'm only human, so if you spot a mistake, let me know in the comments. In case you're totally unfamiliar with the Hyperdimension Neptunia series, I'll give you a bit of a rundown on what the series is about. In terms of gameplay, the mainline games are JRPGs. You go into dungeons with a party of four, coming into contact with enemies initiates a battle where you can use normal and special attacks. It's turn-based and turn order is based on stats. There's things like items and equipment and all that sort of stuff you'd expect from JRPGs. Spin-off games can be quite different though, so we'll talk about those later on. Let's talk about the setting and story next. The whole premise is that the main characters are goddesses who are personifications of game consoles, each with their own land that they rule over. The titular character of the series is Neptune, who is based on the unreleased Sega Neptune, and she rules over her land known as Planeptune. Noir is based on the PlayStation 3 and Control's Last Station. Bert is based on the Xbox 360 and her land is called Leanbox. And Blonde is based on the Wii with her country being called Louis. At first they fight each other to take away shares from each other, so like a literal console war, but over time they become friends and for the most part of the series they're more like friendly rivals who team up to defeat some evil force. These goddesses can transform into an HDD form where their appearance and their character can change quite a bit. Their HDD forms have names, Neptune is Purple Heart, Noir Black Heart, Vert Green Heart, and Blonde is White Heart. The in-universe public only know the goddesses in this form, so I like to think of their regular forms as incognito mode. There's also a few more important characters like the CPU candidates who are the goddesses' little sisters, and they personify handheld consoles. Nepgear is Neptune's little sister who's based on the Sega Game Gear and transforms into Purple Sister. I think you can figure out the HDD naming convention from here on out. Uni is based on the PSP and is Noir's sister. And then we have the twins, Ram and Ram, who are based on the Nintendo DS and its dual screens. While all these characters are based on specific consoles, I think of them more as broad representations of the brands. At least that's how I see it. Though there are some occasional serious moments, the Neptunia series is very lighthearted with a lot of unsubtle references and breaking of the fourth wall. It's quite a wacky and specific kind of humor that I enjoy. The series doesn't take itself too seriously, which keeps things lighthearted. I think it would be tragic to see a Neptunia game that tried to be super serious. It just wouldn't work. There is fan service in case you didn't notice the HDD outfits, with the occasional CG here and there. Plus, they also like to pair certain characters if you catch my drift. Also, there's a lot of dialogue to go through and sometimes it's not voiced, so keep that in mind. You also have the choice of switching between Japanese and English voiceovers. Let's take a look at the list of releases first. That's quite a bit of stuff to go through, but it gets much easier if we group the games into categories. Let's split up main and spin-off games. We'll take a look at spin-offs later because some of those feature the same style of shenanigans and humor as the main games, but with sometimes completely different gameplay mechanics. I'm sure some of you are interested to see info on those games too, or even prefer them over the main series. For newcomers, I would recommend starting with Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1. Canonically, it's the first game of the series and does a good job of introducing new players to the world of Neptunia. In the beginning of the game, Neptune loses her memory, which makes it easy uh, to introduce characters and settings, since everything new or not mentioned yet needs to be explained to her by other characters. The Rebirth series is a remake of the first three PS3 games, both in gameplay and story. The Rebirth games are available on the PlayStation Vita and PC, on either Steam or GOG.com where it's completely DRM free. The differences between the PC and Vita versions are the visuals. The PC game is capable of running at 60 frames per second and it looks nicer overall, but the gameplay is the same. The gameplay of the Rebirth games is like I described earlier. You complete story and side quests by going into dungeons, killing specific monsters, collecting certain items or going to event markers. Battles are turn-based. If enemies touch you from behind, they get the first turn, but if you manage to strike first, you get the first turn. 
You can use normal attacks and special attacks like I mentioned. Goddesses can transform into HDD mode for extra eye candy, which also has the side effect of increasing the character's stats. There's also something called Lily Rank, which is a system that allows characters to perform certain abilities in battle depending on how much they like each other. The Lily Rank system also serves as a way to bring in a bit of a Yuri vibe. And this system exists in some variation in most games, even spin-offs. There's a few reasons I don't recommend starting with the earlier PS3 games, Hyperdimension Neptunia, Neptunia Mark II, and Neptunia Victory. Those games are no longer canon. Due to various licensing agreements or disagreements, they had to retcon out a bunch of characters that personified other game companies, and a lot of the story has been rewritten as well. Not to mention the first game has very different gameplay mechanics that were clunky and, in my opinion, not all that fun. And the random encounters, which aren't random at all, but more like encounters based on distance traveled, are about as welcome as Zubats in a cave. I think having this game be the introduction of the series could potentially scare off someone who'd otherwise be a fan. And it looks like the developers knew that, hence the remakes. But that recommendation of starting with Rebirth 1 is due to gameplay and continuity reasons. There's one thing that the first game does better than the remakes, or any of the other games, is flesh out the world and characters. A lot of the finer details of how different each of the countries are and things like politics were portrayed in a really interesting and detailed way. There's a lot of atmosphere that doesn't exist in any of the other games. The image in my head of what makes up the world of Neptunia is built on the first game's portrayal of the world. So if you have a PS3 and you think you can stomach the gameplay and you really care about the story and the world, I think it's worth checking out the first Hyperdimension Neptunia, even if there are details that have been changed by the remakes. It's worth considering, or at least maybe look at some cutscenes on YouTube or something. But for most people, I'll stick with my suggestion to start with Rebirth 1. One complaint I hear about is that all the Rebirth games are essentially the same with the same gameplay, graphics, and reused assets like dungeons and monsters, with only the story being different. That's certainly true, and I wouldn't blame anyone who played Rebirth 1 to be tempted to skip Rebirth 2 and 3. If you want a bit more refinement, you could go straight into Mega Dimension Neptunia V2R, and this applies to newcomers as well as players who've played at least one of the earlier games. Things are again becoming a bit confusing since V2R is a remake of V2, which was released only a few years earlier. I'll go over differences in a second. The story is the same with both games, though V2R has some additional cutscenes. Neptune and Nepgear get sucked into the Zero Dimension where everything is in ruins. There they meet Uzume Tonobuchi, who's also a CPU, and an older Neptune from another dimension, and she's not a CPU. You team up and try to defeat the dark CPU with a bunch of dimension hopping along the way. The world map has been overhauled, so instead of being a point-and-click affair where you can select whatever dungeon you want to go to, you have to travel to your intended destination. I like this because it increases the perceived scale of the game. It's so much better than the old world map where it's just a glorified list. There's also giant battles, new next forms for the original Gang of Four, and formation attacks, which are all things that help make the game feel fresh compared to the Rebirth games. Let's talk about the differences between V2 and V2R. Both are available for the PS4, but as of this video, the remake hasn't been ported to the PC yet, which I'm sure will happen eventually, like all NEP games. V2R has VR functionality, which is limited to events that happen in your room. If you don't have a VR headset, you can just look around with the right analog stick, and it works fine. The VR cutscenes are pretty fun, and it's nice to be able to interact with the goddesses, even if it's just yes or no. For some reason, V2R starts off with the assumption that you've played V2 already, which is a bit strange and confusing to people who haven't. But that only applies to the VR events, so it's not too bad. The main differences between V2 and V2R are in battle and graphics. So instead of the usual combo system, V2R goes with AP that restores every turn. So you can store up some AP for more combos, or not waste your turn when defeating an enemy you know can be killed with only a few or just one attack. The biggest letdown in V2R is that it runs at 30 FPS instead of 60. Supposedly the graphics were improved as well, and they kind of are. V2 has this bloom effect and can look really oversaturated, while V2R doesn't. The environments in V2R are also much more detailed, but some dungeons can look flat and lifeless compared to V2, where the bloom filter helps give a bit more atmosphere. I'm a bit torn on which I prefer the look of, even though V2R features higher polygon models and better textures. I guess it doesn't matter too much which version you go with, but the added VR events in V2R are nice, and the new battle system seems like what they'll be going forward with. 
Plus, the whole 30 FPS thing in the end isn't such a big deal, considering that battle is turn-based anyway. But still, transformations and special attacks look so much cooler in 60 frames per second. I'm sure the PC version, if and when it'll get released, will support 60 FPS, just like all the past PC releases. If you want something a bit different from the main series, I would recommend taking a look at spin-offs. They feature the same level of shenanigans as the main games, but usually feature something unique, whether it's the gameplay, story, setting, or a combination of those things. These games are their own self-contained thing and not canon, though there will be references you won't catch if you haven't played the main games before. If you like real-time combat, then there's three games worth looking at. Hyperdimension Neptunia U Action Unleashed for the Vita and PC, Mega Tag Mansion Blonde and Neptune vs. Zombies, also for the Vita and PC, and Cyber Dimension Neptunia for Goddesses Online, which is available on the PS4 and PC. All of those feature real-time combat and are made by Tamsoft, who are also developers of the Senran Kagura games. Out of those three, Cyber Dimension is the newest and the one that feels most like a mainline game. It's the whole game inside a game sort of thing, where the goddesses and CPU candidates play an MMORPG called Four Goddesses Online, which itself is based on the goddesses. It follows the same sort of formula of the regular games, where you receive quests and go around various dungeons defeating monsters and collecting items, except it's not turn-based. You're free to run into and out of battle, and honestly, I think I prefer this type of gameplay over the turn-based approach. Cyber Dimension tries to emulate the MMORPG experience by not being able to pause when opening menus. You're able to run around with the map open, which is kind of handy. And running is really fast, which makes navigating dungeons really nice, actually. It also looks awesome because it's running on the Unreal 4 engine and it has no recycled dungeons. It's all new. The fantasy setting is a nice touch too, and the music suits everything very well. There are technical issues with it, like terrible co-op multiplayer. Seriously, I wouldn't even bother. Frame rate issues on the PS4 version, and weird bugs where you can get stuck underneath an enemy, for example, and just stupid AI in general. I mean, what's going on here? But it's a fresh of breath air from the turn-based games, and I really enjoyed it anyways. The PC versions run the best at a constant 60 FPS. If your computer can handle it, I would recommend that. I still like the PS version too, just expect frame rates to fluctuate anywhere from 60 to under 30 in some occasions. And one thing I would have liked to see was more playable characters. Ify, Kampa, Pishi, Plutia, and Uzume are all just NPCs. I thought it would have been really cool to have them playable as well. The other two Tamsoft games, Neptunia U and Megatag Mention, feel more like spin-offs. They're hack and slash or beat em up games depending on how you like your terminology. Nep U doesn't come across as a very complex game. You pick your character and fight hordes of enemies, basically. The different game modes are pretty fun, and the banter between the characters is amusing as usual. The story is a little bit light on this one, so don't expect too much there. One thing I like about this game is how easy it is to pick up and play for short bursts. Some might find it a bit repetitive, but I like to use the word therapeutic. I try to imagine the enemies as all the rude customers I've had to deal with. Clothing rips upon taking damage, which is something Tamsoft brought over from their Senran Kagura games. There actually is a game mechanic behind all of this, and having your clothes ripped off means you can transform sooner. You can select up to two characters at a time and switch between them at will. The Vita version runs at 30, and the PC version runs at 60 FPS. Mega Attack Mansion takes the same hack and slash gameplay formula, but changes the setting to a school setting and makes Blonde the main character. I found the game's aesthetics quite noteworthy, and it's interesting to see Blonde in the spotlight for a change. The game features really odd looking zombie enemies, but it's nice that the levels and enemy designs are unique to the game, instead of using the same assets over and over again, which makes it more like a proper game that can stand on its own. I like how silly the story is, and somehow the normally generic school setting ends up being a nice change. Compared to Nepu, there are more characters to choose from, including Pishi, Plutia, and Uzume, which is always a good thing. I'm not really sure which I prefer more, Neptunia U or Mega Tag Mansion. Sometimes I like the more simplistic and bare-bones approach of Nepu, while other times I prefer Mega Tag Mansion's more original story and refinements, like the extra difficulty and, for example, how it's easier to raise each character's lily rank. That was much more of a chore in Nepu. If you like this style of game, I would recommend giving either of them a try. If you like strategy RPGs, you might want to consider Hyper Devotion Noir, it looks a little bit like Disgaea at first, but it doesn't play like it. The pace is slower, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, and general gameplay isn't as deep. 
The art style is all chibi-like, which I'm not a fan of, but it's a decently fun game. The stages are interesting with all kinds of environmental obstacles to deal with, and while the gameplay isn't as refined or deep like a Disgaea game, the story, which focuses on noir, is quite good in my opinion, though it does have a bit of a twist to it. The player, that means you the player, is represented in-game, which makes it feel very VN-like in a way. I guess the point is to make it feel like Noir is talking to the player directly and getting all lovey-dovey. It's an interesting idea. Now let's talk about spin-offs I wouldn't recommend to newcomers. Neptunia Producing Perfection is the only video game that didn't make it to the PC because it's so bad, presumably. This is supposed to be an idle simulation and rhythm game, but it doesn't feel like you're even doing anything during the performances. If it was an actual rhythm game, I think I would have enjoyed it much more, like with Senran Kagura Bon Appetit. I enjoyed playing that because it feels more like my actions actually correspond to something in-game. The title producing perfection is a bit ironic, and overall it's just too far removed from what a Neptunia game is, so I can't really recommend it. And the last spin-off I want to mention is Super Dimension Neptune vs. Sega Hard Girls. I don't think newcomers should start here because this is a crossover with the Sega Hard Girls franchise. I actually found the story enjoyable, with some funny bits of dialogue, but it's better enjoyed if you have at least some experience with the NEP series. The basic gameplay is actually kind of similar to the Rebirth games, but with a cumbersome battle system and really wonky platforming functions. It feels like a familiar game with a bad game mechanic tacked onto it. Look at this nonsense! Also, the whole time loop aspect is a pain in my opinion. That was a lot of games we talked about there, so I think it's best to do a little summary. In my opinion, the best place for most people to start is Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 for the Vita or PC. V2 or V2R isn't a bad entry point to the series either, with its more refined nature, and people who find the gameplay of Rebirth 2 and 3 repetitive might want to check it out as well, since it features new dungeons and less recycled content. It also has a really good soundtrack, I don't think I mentioned that. If you want something a bit different from the main series, check out some of the spin-offs, Cyber Dimension especially feels very much in line with mainline games, but with completely new dungeons and environments, great looking graphics, and real-time combat. But it's quite buggy. Hyper Devotion Noir is a fun turn-based strategy game, and Neptunia U and Blonde and Neptune vs. Zombies are both decent hack-and-slash games to check out as well. I'm going to throw in one suggestion here at the end, because I know there are people who don't like the games, but find the story and setting appealing. If you count yourself as one of those people, I recommend checking out the anime. It does a really good job of capturing the spirit of the cutscenes, as well as the tone of the games. As a fan of the games, it's also nice to see the characters interact outside of VN-style cutscenes and CGs, no matter how nice they are. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. You can make the argument that it doesn't matter too much where to start in the Neptunia series, because each game does give you a crash course of the basics, but hopefully the info in this video gives you a better perspective of the series. Hyperdimension Neptunia isn't for everyone, but it might be for you, so check it out. Remember to like the video if you did, and subscribe to see more videos. I'm planning to do more of these where to start videos, and I've been having a lot of fun making this series so far. Also take a look at my Patreon page if you would like to support my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.